Very good. Happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers, and thank you for all that you do. Well, if you get your outlines out with me this morning, I want to talk to you uh, about really having a high-definition living, that we live our lives intentionally for the cause of Christ. There seems to be a great big difference that we see what so many think is a normative Christian life and what the New Testament clearly defines as the norm. And we're really talking about the power of God that's available to all of us. You've heard me say this before, that you and I don't have to go from calamity to calamity to calamity to defeat. That with the Lord, the Lord gives us everything we need at any given moment, every second of the day. The problem is, a lot of times, we don't take the time to ask. And so this morning, I want to talk about the power of the Word, God's Word, and the power of prayer. We see that in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they were doing miraculous things in the New Testament church. And then as you go down a few chapters, in chapter 6, it says, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And so that's what they were doing in the New Testament church that they gave themselves, it says, to prayer and to the word. And I would say this, what do we give ourselves to today? A lot of times we are too busy to give ourselves to prayer to give ourselves to the word. And I want to make a challenge to all of us today that we would be studiers of God's word and we would put it into practice in our everyday lives. It is so important. Look at the very first verse on your outline or on the screen this morning. It's found in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. And it says this, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think to the power that works, say it with me, within us. God's power works within us. And that's why God's power is so important because listen, it's available to us. The question is how much are you trusting God in your lives for God to do great and wonderful and miraculous things in your life? God will do far more for us than we ask and desire in prayer. But also, me even more than our imaginations can perceive. And that promise depends on the Holy Spirit's presence and power and grace operating in our lives. So this morning, I want to talk about the important aspects of prayer. Look at the next verse found in John, the first chapter, and I'm going to look at verses 1 and 14, and it says this, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. See, there is power in God's Word. God spoke things into existence We even know when Satan came to try to tempt Jesus three different times, Jesus says, it is written. It was the power of the word. When Jesus was fasting for 40 days and he was hungry, and Satan came to him to try to tempt him, and he says, you are hungry, aren't you? Yes, you are the son of God, aren't you? Then turn these stones into bread. And I love what Jesus says. He says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. And then he says, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Isn't that powerful? That's what we live by. Every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, there is power in God's word. There is power in God's word. And again, the reason we don't ask for help, the the reason that we fail to pray as we should, because I believe we really don't understand or believe that God has power to change anything about our situation. 
And God's power is available to us. Why? That we might fulfill his will. That we might fulfill his purpose in our lives. That we might live successful lives and go out and reach others for the cause of Christ. It was a powerful thing. And, and I, I want to commend all of you who, who bring food to the church. We pass out food here during the week. And yesterday there was uh, seven or eight of us at Adopt a Block. And we took that food, and I tell you, people just flocked to the neighborhood that we minister over here. And boy, the conversations that we had, 25 kids came out, and we helped them make Mother's Day, Day gifts. And, and uh, boy, some of the conversations are powerful. Why? Because we go out and we meet a need. Listen, in Jesus' name. One of the people asked one of the gals there, they said, do you get paid for doing this? And she smiles, she says, no, we do this because we love you. They get a big grin on their face. It is the power of God working in our lives that we have that love and compassion to others that we reach out. And I tell you, even people in the hood when we're there, they, they covet prayers. <laughs> we say, hey, can we pray for you? Man, they just stop and they, they, they're not even embarrassed. They just raise their hands right there on the streets. They don't care who's watching and we just lay hands and pray for them. And we believe for miracles in their lives, amen? It is the power of Christ working in us. It says this in John 15, seven. It says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. And so that's a very in important verse that we see here the secret of answered prayer is abiding in Christ see the nearer we live to Christ through meditation and study of the word and communion with him the more our prayers will be in line with the nature and the words of Christ and the more effective our prayers will be wouldn't it be powerful if you prayed for people and they got healed because they would see the power of Christ. And so it's a powerful thing that God gives to us. It is his power, but it's for a reason, it's for a purpose that we share Jesus Christ with others. And I want to talk about here some requirements for powerful prayers. How many of you want powerful prayers? All right, half of you, that's good. That's, uh... It says this in James chapter 5, verse 16. He says this, the effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. In the King James, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. In other words, a lot is accomplished. There, there is a lot that comes out of that type of prayer, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And so powerful prayer requires, I believe, several things that I, I have marked out here. The first one, if you write this down from the scriptures we read, abiding in Christ, <clears throat> that we abide in Christ. That he is a part of our lives. That we walk in his ways, in his will. That we abide in him and his words abides in us. And then number two, that we submit our wills to God's will. We submit our will to God's will. In other words, when we pray, you can pray to your own will. Have you ever done that? Lord, this is what I want. We pray. And a lot of times, listen, we pray just to get. Oh God, I need this. Oh God, I need this. Oh God, help me with this. Help me with this. Help me with this. And we miss the true meaning of prayer. Part of prayer, listen, is having a relationship with Jesus Christ. Can you imagine being in a relationship with one person talks all the time and nobody's listening? <laughs> Sometimes in prayer, it's good just to listen and have a relationship with the Lord. Hmm. 
And in that prayer, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So see, we're praying in accordance to God's will, that God's will would be done. And so that's the important aspect of prayer, that we would submit our will to God's will. And then number three, having a humble heart. A humble heart, it's not a prideful thing. You're not praying for stuff for you or just to get stuff. And that's why fasting is so important because it gets our hearts and our lives right with the Lord. And then number four, a right relationship. A right relationship. That we would be righteous in right standing with God. That a relationship with the Lord would always be intact. And then number five, that we have a prayer of faith. Faith. The Bible says in Hebrews, without faith, it's what? It's impossible to please him. So that's why faith is so important. And a lot of times our faith is tied to how big we believe God is in our lives. Hmm. <clears throat> it is important that we get together and have a relationship with the Lord, that we pray on a regular basis and spend time with him in that soul-searching conversation and allow God to search our hearts. Hmm. And powerful prayer requires faith. And it means this. It means that you and I are convinced that God is able to do abundantly more than we ask or that we think. And so what can prayer do for you? How can it help us in our relationship with the Lord? Because if I were to ask you before the service, how often you pray and what, are, what does your prayers consist of? What is the purpose of your prayer? And I want to talk about that here. The first one is we gain true knowledge about God and ourselves. That's what prayer does for us. It helps us to gain true knowledge about God and about ourselves. And a lot of times we wouldn't correlate the two. That prayer actually helps us to obtain knowledge of the Lord and ourselves, but it's true. Because when we go through struggles, we come to the end of ourselves, and what do we do? Boy, it must be time to pray. <laughs> and we find out who we are, and we find out how big God is in our lives. Look what it says in Jeremiah 33, 3. He says, call to me, and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Isn't that interesting? In prayer, when we call out to the Lord, there's something, as he answers you, he'll tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. So that true knowledge about God and ourselves comes through prayer. It is of primary importance in our relationship to God that we know who we are individually, our weaknesses, our sinfulness, our selfishness. We find out how great and holy God is and how sinful and how weak we are when we're truly in the presence of the Lord. Amen? And so that's why it's so powerful. When we are in the presence of the Lord, it reveals things to us. In Romans 7, 18, it says, I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. And we find that out as we live in a natural man, but in a spiritual man, God is working in us and through us to see great and mighty and wonderful things. Hmm. In Psalm 139, 23 and 24, it says this, Search me, O God, 
and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts and see if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. See, a lot of times when we go to the Lord in prayer, it's Lord, search me. Lord, is there something going on in my heart that I need to change? Lord, if there's any wicked way in me, would you reveal it to me? Hmm. And the Lord begins to reveal those things in our life. And this is a good prayer to pray regularly, not just once. <laughs> when we empty ourselves, it makes room for God to fill us. Powerful living is when, through prayer, we see ourselves clearly. And then number two, it helps our hearts are changed. Our hearts are changed. When we truly seek out the Lord, the Lord begins to change our hearts. He reveals things to us about ourselves and about the Lord. In Psalm 19, 12 and 13, it says this, how can I know that all the sins lurking in my heart cleanse me from these hidden faults? Keep your servant from deliberate sins. Do not let them control me. Then I will be free of guilt and innocent of great sin. We see that David is praying this prayer, that prayer cleanses you and gives you a new heart. And as God answered David after his disastrous fall and made him clean, it says this in Psalm 51 2. David is saying, Wash me clean from my guilt, purify me from my sin. Hmm. What happened is David comes to the Lord and he turns to him in prayer. God has the ability to change our hearts. And a lot of times only the Lord can change our hearts, right? Have you ever tried to change somebody's heart? Doesn't work, does it? Only God can change the heart and that's when we are in the presence of the Almighty that he begins to reveal himself to us and he changes us from the inside out. As a pastor, there's nothing greater than to see somebody's heart and life change. <laughs> I was in a meeting and somebody from our Recover Church came and shared and, and is sharing today at our Recover Church a testimony of how her life was changed through that ministry. She was hard and now if you look at her, she's involved, she's serving and the Lord has changed her from the inside out and she says, you know what? Because you guys came to minister over here, it's literally changed my life. And that's the power of God working, amen? Because none of us can change somebody's hearts, but God's word can. And the Lord has answered her prayers. And then another thing that our prayer does and the word, we find wisdom. Number three, would you write that down? We find wisdom. The word of God gives wisdom, and so does prayer. The word is very explicit about this point. Look what it says in James 1, 5 through 8. He says, if any of you lack, lacks wisdom, he should, say with me, ask. ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. We talked about this a little bit last week. If you lack wisdom in any area, pray and ask God for wisdom. When I'm counseling somebody, I always pray this prayer. Lord, I don't know what's going on, but you do. And the Lord reveals what that person needs. If you're in a situation and you don't know what to do, ask the Lord. Say, Lord, 
I don't know what to do in this situation. I, I lack wisdom and, and understanding in this situation. Would you reveal it to me? And the Lord does. The Lord does. And that's what's so powerful about prayer that it shows that we are relying upon the things of the Lord. No promise could be clearer than that verse that if you need it, ask, but ask believing and you will receive. I don't believe that the Lord wants us to struggle in this life just just going from hard times to hard times. He wants to deliver us from darkness that we might be in the light. And he puts his own infinite wisdom at our disposal. And all he asks is that we ask and that we ask in faith. How many times do we stumble along in our own way instead of walking in his wisdom simply, simply because we do not ask? Hmm. And then number four, another thing that prayer does, we receive God's power. We receive God's power. Look what it says here in Psalm 119, 11. It says, your word have I treasured in my heart that I might not sin against you. It is God's word and it's also a prayer. A lot of times, those in God's word would pray the scriptures. Let me hide God's word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Look what it says in Isaiah 40, 31. But those who wait upon the Lord, how many of you enjoy waiting upon the Lord? Good. How many of you like waiting in general, like in lines? Any of you guys go to Disneyland where you get to spend all this, all this exorbitant amount of money just to wait in long lines? Isn't that crazy? Wow, you get maybe on two rides after you spend a few hundred dollars. Anyway, waiting can drive you crazy, can't it? But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Why? Because we're waiting upon the Lord. And there's something that happens when we wait upon the Lord. Because what happens is when we try to do it on our own, or if the Lord shows up sometimes too soon, we take credit for it. Have you ever gone through a situation and it's gotten bad and you pray and you pray and you pray? And then this is what I don't like about the Lord. He waits till the very last minute and then he shows up. You know why he does that? So he gets all the credit and all the glory. And it reveals his power in our lives. And that's why those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strengths in life. Amen. Ephesians 1, 15 and 19, it says this. For this reason, ever since I heard, heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. And I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart might be enlightened in order that you may know the hope in which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints and his incomparable great power for us who what? Believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength. Paul the Apostle says, I, I pray that the eyes of your heart might be open, that you might see certain things, that you might see the hope of his calling, that you might understand the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and that you might understand his great power that's available for your everyday lives for those who believe. And then the last point this morning, through prayer we can accomplish mountain moving faith. Through prayer that we might accomplish 
mountain moving faith. Look what it says in Matthew 21, 21. He says this. So Jesus answered and he said to them, assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and you do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, it will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. See, when you and I spend time in prayer, God begins to reveal his will and his direction and his plan and purpose for our lives. God has so much at our disposal, and the reason being is he loves us. And he has called us. Every spiritual blessing in our lives is given by our Father in answered prayer. Prayer promotes our spiritual growth like almost nothing else in our lives, where our hearts are changed, where we gain wisdom, where we understand ourselves and we receive the power of God in our lives. I not only want that, folks, I need it. <laughs> How about you? And I want to encourage everyone here today. I think mothers know this because mothers pray for their kids a lot, I believe. But this is a powerful, powerful thing that, the God, that God gives to us. That we have his holy word. And that we have access to him because what Jesus accomplished on the cross. Amen. I want to challenge you. Don't be too busy to pray. Don't be too busy to read. Take time every single day. We talked about consecrating certain things to the Lord. Just being here. That you're putting the Lord first in your lives. And every single day, spend time with him. Don't get so busy that you get robbed of spending time in the word and spending time in prayer. Amen? Because we're all busy. We talked about that last week. But we have to consecrate our time unto the Lord. That we give a part of our time to the Lord as we give our finances and our talents and our abilities and all those things. Everything belongs to the Lord. Amen? But he gives it that we might steward those things well. Listen, not to accomplish our purpose and plans in life, but to accomplish his plans and purpose for our lives. Amen. Would you bow your heads and pray with me? Our dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today. Lord, we thank you for how powerful your word is. How powerful that we can come into the presence of the Most High God hmm, because of what was accomplished upon the cross. Oh, Lord. Thank you that you love us so much. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And Lord, that's just the beginning. Would you help each and every one of us in our everyday relationship with you that we don't get so caught up about what's going on in our lives that we don't spend time listening to your words and knowing you through prayer. Lord, not that we would just get a bunch of things, but Lord, you would reveal yourself to us in a powerful way. That Lord, that we would get true knowledge of who you are. That Lord, that our hearts would change. That we would find wisdom and receive your power in our lives. And that our faith would be strong, that we would understand how big you are and what our purpose is here on earth. Lord, we love you today. Lord, I pray that you would bless all the mothers today. Lord, help their burdens to be light. Give them the joy of serving you. Lord, give them wisdom and understanding as they teach their kids and love on them 
and pray for them. And so, Lord, we pray that special blessing upon our mothers here today. Thank you for your word that corrects us and aligns us with you. Lord, thank you for accomplishing everything upon the cross of Calvary that we might have eternal life. We love you and we thank you. And in Jesus' name we pray and all God's people say with me, amen, amen. Well, God bless you.